Hello, everybody. Next case is Tyler Brecht, 24S31349. Both here is the attorney for sentencing. All right. Uh, Mr. Danian, have you had an adequate opportunity to review the pre sentence report and the sentencing information with your client? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Additions, corrections, or deletions? Thank you. No additions, corrections, or deletions, Your Honor. We think the report is accurate. All right. Then, Ms. Krause, anything on behalf of the people? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Damien. Thank you. you. Uh, my client is 28 years old. Um, he has a very good job working as a crane operator. Um, the instant offense um, uh, involved uh, possession of cocaine. Uh, his prior record uh, is not horrible. He had a couple other prior uh, driving license suspended charges, uh, one prior felony conviction, uh, resisting and obstructing. Um, this is a situation where the guidelines are relatively low, uh, zero to nine months. My client is respectively um, seeking uh, consideration for just probation only and no jail. It's a situation where he does have a young daughter, a three-year-old daughter, and uh, apparently toward the end of the month here on August 27th or 28th, she has to do an MRI brain scan. If the court does impose jail time, the reason I bring that up is because he was asking for a possible delayed sentence just so he could be there and attend that doctor's appointment. Um, if the court does impose jail time, he's asking for uh, consideration for work release so he could continue to work and be out and support his family. But the facts of this case, Your Honor, are just that he was in his vehicle. Uh, his grandfather had passed away and he was transporting some of his grandfather's possessions. He did have ammunition and uh, that was being transported and some of the bullets had fallen out of the boxes. So when the officer approached the vehicle, he saw uh, one or more bullets in the vehicle and that led to a search of the vehicle and then a relatively small amount of cocaine. It was, a, I think, a pen with some residue in it was what they found in his vehicle. But they did do a search of the home. They did not find any other drugs in the home, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Brack, anything that you want to say before the court imposes sentence? Um, yeah, I just, I don't feel that going to jail would be beneficial to me. Um, I got, I'm a single dad. I pay all these bills for myself. I got a good job and I've come a long way from my prior record. And I hope that you guys can give me a second chance to kind of show that this isn't who I am. All right. So Mr. Breck, you stand before the court here today. You have four prior misdemeanors and you do have a prior felony. Now, I think all this is worth noting as I look through it carefully, um, because generally when we look at cases like this, a felon in possession of ammunition, that's kind of a, a serious thing. I don't want to minimize it. But when I look back through your history, it was an R&O. &R, and I don't know much about the R&O &R other than what was there. But what's obvious to me when I look at it is if you had an opportunity at YTA, you wouldn't have a felony conviction and you blew it, right? So now you have this felony conviction, which then starts this cascade of events in today's world where, you know, I, I, I have no idea what the RNO involved, but now you can't have a gun, you can't have ammunition. Um, I guess, you know, reasonable minds can debate whether that's even something that should be part of our criminal justice system here now. But the point of all that is when I go back further in your history and I see we've got possession of marijuana, operating while intoxicated, um, larceny from a vacant building, failed to display a valid license, drive while license suspended, improper plate, combined with, this just kind of blows my mind, combined with I had a few grams of cocaine that I had obtained to use while celebrating my birthday plans that weekend. It kind of all fits together, right? And I point that out because maybe you're one of the exceptions to the rule. There are people in the world that can occasionally use marijuana, occasionally use cocaine, and it doesn't become a problem. But those folks are probably the exception and not the rule. The rule is generally people end up having a problem particularly when we're talking about something like cocaine. You can become addicted to that very quickly. And again, your history would suggest that maybe you can dabble in it. It doesn't become an addiction that really affects your life. But when I look at your history, maybe we're trending there, right? All the way back as a juvenile with the marijuana OWI. And so even if you're the 
exception and not the rule. Mr. Danian honed in on something that I was looking at. Why in a million world years would somebody who has a job like you do, other than maybe the attorneys were that are in this room where the state has artificially raised their wages under IPC to $125 an hour. There's nobody in this room that makes as much as you do an hour. Nobody. They can almost $50 an hour. And I can't imagine an employer, if they knew that you were operating cranes, but you like to dabble in cocaine as a birthday celebration, would think that's a great idea. In fact, it would probably expose them to a hell of a lot of liability. Why would you ever risk that? And that's where I'm getting at. So your history would suggest that maybe this is not something you can dabble in and you're the rule or the exception and it doesn't impact you. Because now here we are with a new felony. And I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not worried about this felony. Right. I, I don't think your guy that we have to worry about is going to go do something crazy with guns or ammunition. And again, I go back to I, I don't know that we even need a prohibition against you possessing a gun or ammunition. But I do worry about the substance abuse and the combination of that and firearms or the combination of that and operating cranes. So I'm hoping that we can address that with supervision. I am gonna follow most of these recommendations. I'm gonna place you on a period of supervision for two years. I'm not gonna go over all the terms of these. I am gonna adopt all 29 of them. I'm gonna amend one here that we'll get to in a minute. But as a period of that two year supervision or as conditions of that, you're gonna to have to take a substance abuse assessment. And we're gonna follow all the recommendations of that and we'll find out what's going on, okay? So if you're the guy that is slipping into something that's more serious than, than a recreational use, then we'll address that. If you're not, then we'll address maybe how we don't use that recreational substance so that we don't endanger losing what is a fantastic job or, in your own words, not having contact with your daughter, all right, or even being an example for somebody like that, that might say, well, gosh, I, dad didn't see me, but I know dad likes to drink to excess or use cocaine. Maybe I should try that. So we'll follow all the recommendations of it, whatever that may be. I'm also going to require that you have curfew between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Also going to require that you maintain employment of at least 30 hours a week or a combination of that with your supervision obligations. And I don't expect that that's going to be a problem for you at all. I am required by statute to impose a $130 crime victims assessment. Mr. Breck, while you're being supervised, those supervision fees are $30 per month. I'm also going to impose court costs of $550, a fine of $500. Required by statute is a $68 state cost. I'll impose that. And then as it relates to this incarceration, <clears throat> there is a recommendation for five months, and I understand why that might be imposed, but I don't see that as helpful or useful at all. I'm going to impose two days with credit for two days served. You do have a right, sir, to seek appellate review of the sentence. If you'd like to do that, you have 21 days for today's date to make that request. If you want a court point attorney to assist, you have a broader window of 42 days, so 21 and 42. Anything else from either side? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, then, Mr. Brack, how much of those fines it cost you just pay today? I can pay 500. Okay, so we'll take 500 today. And then what do you think you can pay a month going forward to pay the balance of that? 300 bucks. Okay, so then we'll do 300 a month after that until they're paid in full. Before you leave the building, you need to check in with Circuit Court Probation. They're just down the hallway here to the right and Sorry. then on the left. Wait, wait, we got to do uh, the appeal. I didn't catch that. Okay. All right, she's right. We mixed, mixed that or missed that. So you do have 21 days from today's date. If you would like to seek appellate review, if you want a court appointed attorney to assist you, you have a broader window of 42 days to request counsel. So 21 and 42. Other than that, you're all set today. Make sure you make your payment at the clerk's office and then check in with probation before you leave the building. What are we doing on pill? Is that sentencing, right? Yep. Let's do it. Is he in jail? Yep. Can we have Hill at the jail, please? And who at the jail? Hill. Hill. Uh, Michael, Michael Hill. Hill. 
Michael Hill's not in the jail. Yes, he is. I just spoke with him <laughs> 10 Michael minutes ago. Anthony Hill. Oh. Yeah, he, he was right, picked up yesterday. So, what? yeah. Uh, it's child support warrant out of Kent oh. County. How convenient for us. They've got to hold on them. Three months is the recommendation. Four days. The people say the Michigan versus Michael Hill, 24S31508. He's here for sentencing. All right, Ms. Lyons, have you had an adequate opportunity to review the pre sentence report and sentencing information? I have, Your Honor. Additions, corrections, or deletion. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> what the hell kind of comb over was that? I missed that when I was going through it. He seriously just pulled the hair from the sides of the ball spot into the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> oh my God, that just got me. The case, the people say the Michigan versus Michael Hill, 24S31508, he's here for sentencing. All right, Ms. Lyons, have you had an adequate opportunity to review the pre sentence report and sentencing information? I have, Your Honor. Additions, corrections, or deletion? No, Your Honor, it is, does appear accurate as drafted. All right, so with accurate information on which to base sentencing, I'll start with Ms. Krause. Anything on behalf of the people? No. All right, Ms. Lyons. Uh, we are asking that you follow the recommendations here, Your Honor, as set forth. Um, uh, I would note the recommendations are uh, within the parameters of the agreement. He does have credit for four days served. Um, in speaking with him, and, and I think even the PSI reflects this, uh, you know, his story um, really reads almost like a, a a really bad country music song in the sense that he was um, probably lyrics out there for it already. Probably. <laughs> um, quite, quite frankly, Your Honor, I think he was really um, in a pretty low state of depression. And uh, rather than dealing with that in a healthy manner, he, he really turned to substances and, and I would indicate perhaps a variety of substances. Um, and speaking with, with him, I think he really recognized that he could not continue to, to live the way he was. Um, and to his credit, I, I think he has attempted to, to make some good choices. He's reconnected with family, I think, in, in a healthy manner and, and healthy individuals within his family. He has uh, also uh, gotten employment. I mean, if the court looks at his prior employment history, he had, um, uh, it's been a little bit spotty, but really he had a period of time uh, where um, he, he was employed from 2013 to 2021, um, and that was consistent employment. And, and right around that time frame is really um, in, in 2020 is when he really started to struggle with depression. A number of just bad life circumstances had happened to him. And, and from that point, he really just uh, spiraled. Um, he has now employment as a flooring installer at Floor Source um, in Kent County. Uh, that's been a recent employment, Your Honor. Certainly unknown if that's going to still be available to him or not upon his release from jail. Um, if the court would see it fit to allow um, him to, to structure serving his time around staying employed, he would appreciate that. Um, but also recognizes why he's here. Um, he, he's not naive to that. And, and he and I have talked about that. So he's I think mercifully asking for a structured um, uh, stay that would allow him to continue to keep employment, such as serve on weekends. Um, if that's absolutely not an option for the court, he stands before the court recognizing that that this was a choice he made and, and he's gonna have to live with those consequences, Your Honor. I mean, in that sense, uh, I think he recognizes the, the poor choices that he's made. So I'm asking the court to at least consider that uh, uh, when rendering a sentence here today. Okay, Mr. Hill, anything that you want to say before the court imposes sentence? 
Uh, sir, she pretty much nailed all of it. I know this isn't to be taken lightly, but my actions, especially my previous actions back in 2020. Um, but just like she stated, I hope there was a way I could do this and still be there to provide for my family and my kids. As I've started to build relationships, and I just don't want to punish them more than I already have. Um, and like I said, I'm not asking to just get out of this. I just want to be there to provide for my family and still, you know, build the relationships. And um, this has been an eye opening and a blessing for me to realize how wonderful my life is and that I have nothing to complain about. And like I said, she really said everything I wanted to say. Oh, so, thank you, Your Honor. All right. Well, Mr. Hill, it seems from the PSI, you do have some insight into issues here that are going on. And um, uh, Miss Lyons is right. I, I think I talk about country music songs too much on the bench about this, but there's all kinds of examples of, we can laugh about it a little bit, but where people um, in that uh, genre um, hasn't worked out so well, right? Um, how old are you? 36, so maybe these guys. So, you know, like Keith Whitley didn't work out so good for him when he, you know, gets into these funks and gets messed up in uh, alcohol and drugs or Hank Williams Sr. Even Johnny Cash, right? Didn't he wake up in a cave one day and then kind of like you had an epiphany and sort of turns his life around to the extent he went out right. and lived a long, fairly healthy life, right? Recognizing the issues he was struggling with and then addressing them at least in a manner that allowed him to continue on with a career to family and all of those things. So all of it's in reach. The, the, the downside can be really bad using some of those examples. And obviously there's examples of folks that um, uh, meet the problem head on, so to speak, recognize and meet it head on and then and move on to be productive parents, citizens, all of those things. So um, yeah. I'm confident that based on the PSA, you have a handle on what's going on and maybe what you need to do to address it. We're going to do what we can to assist you with that. I'm going to start by placing you on a period of supervision for two years. I'm not going to go over all the terms of your supervision. I will highlight the ones that I think are most relevant, but I'll adopt all 32 of these. We'll start with a substance abuse assessment, and we'll follow all the, all the recommendations of your substance abuse assessment. You'll be doing drugs or alcohol while you're being supervised, and you're going to be tested randomly for the same so we can kind of keep you uh, to, to the extent we can on the right path. I'm going to require that there is a curfew that you have to be in your approved residence between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. I'm going to require that you maintain employment of at least 30 hours a week or a combination of the employment and your supervision obligations. Now, Ms. Lyons has pointed out that maybe the job issue here might become a problem. We don't know whether you're going to be able to go back or not, but I'm confident that Looking through here, you do have the ability to be employed. You have done that a bit in the past. And certainly, um, there's no reason that you can't find employment, even if that prior job does not work out. And then, obviously, we'll also assist with some of your concerns, right? Housing, taking care of the kids, those types of things, right? You, you got to have a job to do that. Sir, I am required by statute to impose a $130 crime victims assessment. I'm going to do so. I am required, well, you will be required to uh, pay supervision fees of $30 per month while you're being supervised. The court costs will be $550. It'll be a fine of $500. Attorney fees of $400 and a state cost required by statute of $68. I will follow the recommendation as it relates to incarceration. I think it's appropriate. You don't want to lose sight of the fact you still are before the court with three prior felonies, three prior misdemeanors. So I'm going to impose three months in the Montcalm County Jail with credit for four you've previously served. It's my understanding you may have a matter now that you need to take care of at Kent County also. So hopefully during this process, you can get that worked out and, and maybe get yourself on your way right when your time here is done. Yeah, Mr. I, I, Hill, you, know. you have it worked out already? Yeah. Okay. Did you say two years probation? Two years okay. probation. So you do have a right, sir, to seek a power review of the signs. And if you'd like to do that, you have 21 days from today's date to make that request. If you want a court appointed attorney to assist you, you have a broader window of 42 days. So 21 and 42. Anything else from your side? All right, Mr. Hill, you are all set. Good luck, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir.
Be safe, be well, sleep sweet, and much love.